by the blood of our people, or your lands kept safe. I see in your eyes the same fear that will take the heart of me. So do all who live to see such times. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are talking about something that I think is a bit overdone and dry, if I'm being p completely honest. But that is the changes being made to the Tolkien lore and, heck, even some of the stories told about these characters in any piece of Tolkien writing. Uh, and this YouTuber has broken down the entire issue that they have with just this one image. And I'm going to put it up on the screen here uh, and so you guys can see it. And the way that they go about explaining this is, is that the image is showing us three key elements that are different than, than what Tolkien wrote. Uh, so we've got two characters that never meet within Tolkien's writings. Um, we've got uh, a clear timeline difference going on here as well right and then um we we also have uh, a problem with uh blurring on uh the climaxes of each other's stories so we've got two characters that are doing um key events meeting up and they're almost going to overshadow each other right and this is actually something that i have been concerned about um that i haven't really talked about too much on our on our youtube channel here and that is there's a lot of characters in this <laughs> show like even if you only saw the teaser trailer there are a sure. lot of characters now game of thrones for a few seasons was able to do it but it, it's really hard to but even even i mean I, i'm interrupting i'm sorry but That's like because because we talked about Condensing characters like Glorfindel and Arwen kind of become one character, Treebeard and Tom Bombadil kind of become one character, and that's just how storytelling is done. And Game of Thrones, amalg Game of Thrones, the books had even more characters than the TV show, and they amalgamated a lot of characters as well. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is almost going in the opposite exactly. direction. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're adding characters. They're, they're, yeah. They're basically saying, look, we we have all these characters, but now we're going to add other characters to at least give us something for these for for the main character for at least the Tolkien characters to kind of bounce off of but then you have scenes like this where two main Tolkien characters meet in a weird way that they never did in his writings and they're both doing things that w one of them is going to kind of take the lead here and this is an issue that doesn't crop up in Peter Jackson's uh, movies because he keeps groups of characters together, right? So mm -hmm. I think that is now I know what happens in in the books as well for the most part, but I think this is really well done on Peter Jackson's part because he is able to have moments of of um, you know elements of a story that are that are getting to a climax or, or elements that are kind of just building. He can have other stories come o jump in for a second and either you know either add some excitement if need be or in some cases just kind of give you a, a moment to pause as you're watching it unfold right so you can have a big battle and then you can cut away to like frodo and sam walking or or you know dealing with a, a much smaller scale issue and then you can cut back to a battle or something like that but the thing is imagine <coughs> if um Frodo and Sam were walking with <laughs> walking along to to Mordor and then they encounter, you know, Legolas again randomly. You know, it, it's kind of weird. It, it would be <clears throat> so strange because Legolas is doing some battles. He can't be helping Frodo, and yet this is exactly what this picture seems to be showing is that two characters that are on their own quests all of a sudden meeting and like helping each other out or or at least like doing something together. It's just very, it's going to be very off-putting for uh, Tolkien readers, especially, but potentially yeah. us as well. And the timeline thing, too. I mean, it's like, 
Frodo walking, and then he bumps into a seal door. No, these aren't from the same time period. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and so here's the thing: is like we're gonna be coming at this when we when we break down this uh, this show, we're gonna be talking about. I think, at least from my own perspective, it's gonna be coming from uh, a, a huge fan of Peter Jackson's. At least the original trilogy, and I'm and I'm the Hobbit is growing on me, but I, I still view it as a weaker installment. <coughs> sorry to the to the original trilogy. So, from that from that perspective, to me, it's going to be really more a judge on how they handle these major characters overlapping and and potentially overshadowing each other, because if each character is doing something very important. Are they going to be able to add, are the, is the show going to be able to add enough weight to each individual character's journey in, in, in that respect? Or is one going to seem like it's a little bit less important or even like kind of gets forgotten? And this is something that Game of Thrones, after it hit its peak in season four, it started to crumble because it could not, it, there's not enough time in the show to, to give enough weight to everyone's individual journey. And that's partly why Game of Thrones started to lose some of its um, excitement, at least for me, and I think for a lot of fans, is because there was just not, they were not able to give due diligence to each individual character. And this is something that this show looks like it's potentially going to run into the same problem. There's a lot of characters. If you look at that trailer, there are so many characters that could be main characters that... I honestly don't know how many storylines we're going to be following, but for sure Galadriel and Elrond, right? For sure those two. You've got potentially some main characters in the dwarves, potentially this uh, this queen dwarf here. We have uh, a love storyline going on between an elf and a human, so that's either at least one, maybe two main characters. We have a a precursor to a hobbit meeting up with a guy that fell from a meteor or something so we're like we're at seven characters that's a lot right like that like you only have an hour per episode some of these characters might not even get in an episode so right that's my real issue here and I, and I, so i know this person is harping on the the, the lore right like like you're, you're condensing two thousand years maybe more into a decade i think the showrunners said maybe a couple decades which is just insane, I will I will fully admit, just insane. Um, but also, you like people are going to pick up on these characters and how they interact with each other, and that's going to kind of drive who you are viewing as as a main character. And so, for example, I don't think anyone views Pippin as a main character. Right, because right. Pippin is almost always long for the ride, even when it's just him and Mary. Mary is is more of a main character than Pippin, and so if like that's okay to have Pippin and meeting all, all these crazy characters, but you you couldn't have you know. Oh, they kind of do in a way have Frodo meet a bunch of main characters, but they have it done in such a way that it's never at the same time. So you have Frodo meet Faramir, for example. And then Gandalf comes in and talks to Faramir, and so we get some nice dialogue there. But there's no overshadowing with Faramir. Faramir comes in and is actually an obstacle for Frodo. So that's one way they can actually make this work, but I don't think they will because we have, and this is going to be a weird hot take, I know, you can laugh at me if you want, but we have two female characters in this image. I don't think either one of them is going to be the obstacle. I just don't think that's what they wrote. Uh, and this is something that I've been wa I know it's weird to say, but I've been watching a lot of new shows and a lot of new movies. And whenever I see something like this, they're always friends. Mm -hmm. There's even if even if one starts out evil, they will be friends. You can look at Star Wars. You can look at um, Marvel. They will be friends. There's no way that they are going to be enemies to each other. There's no way. Um, so. Well, it's nothing like real life. <laughs> Don't like <laughs> secretly all women hate each other. Isn't yeah, that exactly. what they say? <laughs> <laughs> but no, whenever I, whenever I see women or, or any, any people of color or any minorities, they are going to be helpful in the good guys. Like, they can mm -hmm. never be the villains. So, because of that, 
You're not going to have, you might have a fake out. You might have a fake out, but it's not going to work for me. And so it's, it's going to fall flat because it's going to be too obvious what's happening here. I, I actually think that they're going to straight up be friends and help each other. And I just worry that it's going to diminish each of their respective arcs and, and stories. So uh, that is my, my issue with this. But I do appreciate what this YouTuber is alluding to, which is that image alone shows you so many different problems with how these stories are going to unfold. And I agree with you. You're Right off the top, you're talking about how Peter Jackson was smart in combining characters together to make one character and essentially omitting a character, but then maybe making a nod to them by having them in a background or having them just mentioned um, or having a line of theirs be used, right? Like mm -hmm. we see that with Tom Bombadil. Um, I think that is probably what they should have done in some of these situations. But again, we haven't seen the show yet, so we, we I I am gonna withhold all of that judgment. I, this is just something I wanted to bring up as a worry from a from a film fan, a film uh, Lord of the Rings film fan. My issue is seeing how they're handled. Like we we haven't even touched on all the different elves that are involved here. Like, cause we know Elrond is gonna meet up with these dwarves. How's that gonna play out? Does Elrond does Elrond have enough to do, um, in this story, or is he gonna take a bit of a backseat? And I really hope not, cause I, 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 this is maybe weird, but I think he is probably the character I am most interested in learning about because of what little I do know of his travels pre the Hobbit. Yeah. Um, Galadriel, I'm learning more and more as this, as as I learn about the show, um, and she's also pretty interesting. But I, I know the show is going to focus on her. But I, I really do want to know a little bit more about Elrond. So it, it will it will be interesting to see how they handle him as well.